Nick. Call for assistance with the body. Wait! She's still alive. <sighs> Diane, don't move. Don't move her hands and stay still. What? A what? Agent York, George, are you okay? Uh, yes, I'm okay. I think I'm too old to be an acrobat, though. Diane looks okay, too. She should be able to tell us who did this to her. God, I hope so. But you, George, quite a catch. I'm impressed. Hmm? George? Uh. <laughs> Diane! Oh, yeah. what a beautiful baby! The reason why her fear off is many directions. From the agent in short doors, not the way we're not in it. We're finding a truly deep eroticism in all who clear. Every woman will find her cry about being better created by her plot voice. This piece of most unimaginable society. than a whole piece of art. It's a blessed masterpiece by Alice and Gunnar Goldenflower. Yeah. I'm closer. Back in his feet. Diane! Stop right there, Nick. You're under arrest for the attempted murder of Diane Ames. 
off! Don't touch me! Diane, no! Move! Emily, hurry! I requested the ambulance. Thomas will need a body bag, too. <laughs> Nick, quiet. Can you hear that? Hmm? I think he wants us to follow him. Shall we follow, Zack?
Willie, are you out there? Kason, what are you doing in there? York, is that you? Thank God, I can't get this door open. Can you unlock it from your side? Kason, stand away from the door. Where's Diane? And what are you doing here? I was going to ask you the same thing. Well, let's just say I have my reasons, you know, pri private reasons. I don't really have to tell you, do I? Actually, you do. Diane just died a moment ago. What? You're not just a key witness now. You're now a suspect. And you need to tell me exactly what you were doing here. Well, I just... I just came here to talk with Diane, to have a conversation. And I suppose that kiss mark on your cheek is from your conversation. This was just a spur-of-the-moment thing. Which is exactly what killed Diane. Okay, okay. I came here to be with Diane. You happy now? We've been together before, a, a, a couple times. It's one of the reasons why I like coming to this town, see? This time is no different. I, I, I bumped into her in a bar in Seattle. I had some, some holiday coming up. Well, so, so I just took it and I drove her back here. I have a wife, you know, but, but we've been separated for a while. We're going through a divorce right now, and I don't want her lawyer finding out. Anyway, how could I kill Diane if I was in a room locked from the outside? Two hours ago, me and Diane we were taking it easy, drinking upstairs. We were, you know, enjoying ourselves. Then Nick had to show up. Well, then Diane had a sudden change of heart. She locked me up in here. I've just been here, waiting for her to come back, of course, but, but she didn't. I heard footsteps a couple of times, but they just passed by. Well, then I couldn't wait anymore. So I let Willie here out through the window. Then you showed up instead of Diane. Zach, Diane has become the third victim of our killer. And nada from questioning Nick. Nothing. Got no new leads from questioning Nick. He's taken the death of Diane really badly. In shock, the works. He claims to have liked talking with her about art. But he also had a problem with her views about men. He says that they argued, but not at a level that would lead to a murder. They were about to head out to the bar again together. But while he was waiting for Diane, someone knocked him out cold. He has no idea who it was either. Of course, Kaysen looks like a prime suspect. But that door was locked from the outside. There was no other way in or out of that room. Which means there is no evidence of his involvement at this time. He did say something else. The footsteps he heard outside the room were not heels, but a man's boots. And Nick was wearing boots. But now that Diane's dead, no one can back up Nick's statement which is why we have Nick in custody and have to let Kaysen go free. 
That seemed like the only option, at least for now. One more thing, Zach. George looked terribly depressed. In this case of not getting to him. He's feeling responsible for the deaths of Becky and Diana. Take his rules and confidence away from him, and wonder what's left. Well, of course, he'd still have muscle. Zach, let's get back to the hotel. First Anna, then Becky, now Diane. I'm not looking forward to writing this investigation report. Agent Morgan. York. Do you have a moment? What is it, George? There's something I'd like to talk to you about. Do you have any time later? Can't we just do it here? If possible, I'd like to go to a bar. Of course... We don't really have to. A bar? Now that sounds like a good idea. Zack, what do you think? We can go drinking with George, or turn him down and head back to the hotel. George, that scar on your cheek. Where did you get it? This? Didn't I tell you? Well, it's not from work. I got it when I was a kid. A childhood injury. Tree climbing? I used to get a few scrapes myself climbing the big tree in our backyard. I used to climb it a lot. And fall out of it a lot. <laughs> this wasn't anything like that, though. It was my mother. She did it. I'm sorry, George. Don't worry. It's ancient history. The world is flooded with unreasonable violence. The strong overpower the weak, adults over children, men over women, and criminals over their victims. I have no memories of my father. He left before I knew him. My mother would hit me every time I asked why. And it didn't stop there. If I ate too slow, left my shoes scattered around, TV volume too loud, she found reasons to hit me. Hit me bad. The worst was what she called the tree punishment. She'd whip my back with these thin tree branches like a whip. Please, Mama. I won't do it again. Tree punishment was definitely the worst, I tell you. Just hearing those words used to make me shiver and want to pass out. And that's why I didn't want to show you those scars on my back. Every time after the tree punishment, she'd always say the same thing. This is hurting the tree more than it is hurting you. And me, being a naive, dumb kid, I believed her. I went to the woods to apologize to the trees. I kept asking myself, why is she hurting me this way? I thought long and hard about it. In the end, I just figured I'm weaker than her. That's why. It's the law of Mother Nature at work. The strong eat the weak. But now, you have the power to protect the weak. That's right. Perhaps I should thank my mother for guiding me into this line of work. York. 
I've been an arrogant fool, haven't I? And if it weren't for me, both Becky and Diane would still be alive. I could have saved them both. You know, it's almost like they died because of me. You're out of your mind. I invited you to this bar for a drink. But I guess this bar is my confession chamber. And I wanted you to listen. And to tell you. Well, you must already hate me for causing all these problems and not following your orders. York, I'm sorry. I'll follow your orders from now on. You'll have my total cooperation. George, you've been as cooperative as you can be. You even invited an FBI guy to a bar for drinks. You've done a good job protecting this town. And the folks here respect you for that. Nobody can blame you for anything. Thanks. I do feel a little better. Hey, Carol. Becky is dead. Diane, too. We've got Nick in custody as a suspect. Nick didn't do it. Ah, I know. Carol, you took a locket from Diane, didn't you? A locket with this mark on it. I'm busy, gotta go. Thank you. 